Hello, I'm Lord Jimsical, and you're watching New Earth Issues, a program all about comics. So here is my review of Captain America Civil War. I'm going to assume that you've already seen the movie, so this review is going to contain a lot of spoilers. Also, I'm going to be talking about what I thought of the movie, rather than just recapping the story. So if you've not seen the movie yet, you know what to do. I f***ing loved it. There were, of course, many differences between the film and the comic, but anyone who expected it to be identical is a colossal idiot. It was handled in a very smart way. They've built upon events and characters that have been in this universe's continuity so far, which made the registration plot a lot stronger, but they also added in several other story threads. I think it's obvious to say that Marvel have had enough practice fitting this many big name characters in a single movie. So of course, everyone was given the appropriate amount of screen time. The action scenes were utterly astounding. It's clear that they're continuing on with the formula established in Winter Soldier. The combat scenes were very fast paced and with intense sound effects that add a real extra edge to these perfectly choreographed fight scenes. There were a lot of these scenes, not as many as in Winter Soldier, but these ones went on a bit longer. The opening action scene in Lagos, Nigeria was absolutely superb, with the exception of Crossbones being killed in a really shitty way. I was hoping he'd play a bigger part in Cap's world, but that went up in smoke. Having never read a Black Panther title in my life, only having seen him in other titles, I don't know how close he was to his comics incarnation. But I will most certainly say he was absolutely fantastic in this film. His costume, his dialogue, his fight scenes, all of it was superb, absolutely amazing. These guys were all well and good, but I know you just want to hear more about the big guy. Spider-Man. British actor Tom Holland played the part this time around. He did not disappoint. Good work, kiddo. You got this. This version of the character is still in school, and he saves people in secret, which caught the attention of Iron Man. His costume was absolutely brilliant, it had a really classic feel to it. I especially liked the way the lenses in the mask contracted with Peter's facial expression. It's a feature ripped straight from the comics, and I thought it worked brilliantly in this film. Marissa Tomei played the role of Peter's aunt, although she's not so much Aunt May as she is Aunt... Oh my... The big fight in the middle of the movie was amazing, far from a scrap in a car park like I originally feared. This battle was Spider-Man's debut, and he was absolutely excellent in it. I particularly enjoyed the way he was just gushing and being such a fanboy during the fight. It happened so much that Falcon lampshaded it by asking, do you normally talk this much? Well, now that I mention it, I also love how other characters in this film, they just go completely weak at the knees when they meet Captain America, especially Ant-Man. Speaking of Ant-Man, I gushed like a giddy teenager when he turned into Giant-Man during the airport battle. I always assumed that this would be explored in a future Ant-Man movie, but having it here was a hugely pleasant surprise. As mentioned before, they utilise the cinematic universe's short history, but also try and bring in the emotional attachment and drama from the comic. I was concerned that Marvel Studios wouldn't be able to pull this off. Thankfully, I was wrong. I particularly enjoyed how the writers utilised the Winter Soldier as a conflict of interest for both teams. He was used as the catalyst for Team Iron Man to bring in Team Cap, until it was revealed by Baron Zemo, played by German actor Daniel Bruhl, that it was in fact Bucky who assassinated Tony's parents, Howard and Maria Stark, in 1991. Zemo's motivation for this entire plan was that his family was killed in Zakovia during the events of Age of Ultron. So what better way to get back at the Avengers by making them tear themselves apart? That was one of a handful of subplots that went on throughout the film. It was paced really well, I thought. The one thing I was very pleased about was that the Registration Act was done in such a way that it actually could open up debate. In the comics, whether you agreed with the act or not, the character assassination of Iron Man simply made nearly every reader side with Team Cap by default due to how much of a fascist bastard Stark was. You know, both sides had valid points, some more than others, but that's part of the debate, isn't it? All in all, I thought it was really action-packed, great fun, some fantastic jokes, especially between Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'd recommend you go see it. I give it 5 out of 5 pictures of the Vision dressed up like my dad. Thank you for watching my review of Captain America Civil War. If you like this, you can check out my review from a couple of years ago with Dan and Dale on the original Civil War comic story. You can also check out my crossover with Let's Get Drunk and Talk Comics, where we tell you some of the stuff from the comic that won't appear in the film. Thanks again, be sure to subscribe, I'll see you in two weeks.